Hi there, I'm Peter Russell here from SuperTax. Welcome to another one of my video blogs. Today we're going to be discussing the basic understanding of capital gains for income tax purposes here in Canada. Now, the area of capital gains is a broad and complex one. Thus, in this video we're only going to be discussing the basics of a capital gain and I will be showing you a full example of the calculation of a capital gain. Now, what is a capital gain? Capital gain is the profit earned upon the disposition of capital property. Now what's capital property? Capital property here in Canada are things such as land and buildings, capital assets of a business, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, stamps, coins, rare paintings, your personal automobile, even a sailboat you may have. Those are all examples. How do we calculate a capital gain? Well, the formula is usually the proceeds of disposition of the capital property less the adjusted cost base of that property. Now, where do we usually record the capital gain? Well, the detailed portion of the capital gain calculation is found on Schedule 3 of the T1 General Income Tax Return. When we determine what the net capital gain for tax purposes is, it flows through to line 127 on your T1 jacket. Now, what's the difference between a capital gain and a taxable capital gain? Well, here in Canada, only 50% of a taxable of a capital gain, sorry, is taxable. So, for a quick example, let's say I had one share of IBM. I had bought it for $185. I sold it for $200. Well, the gain on that transaction is $15. Only half of that, seven and a half dollars, would be taxable for as a taxable capital gain on the T1 general income tax return. Now, you've probably heard of what is a capital loss. Well, capital loss goes the other way. Say that one share which you bought for $185 was sold for $170. That's a $15 capital loss. A net capital loss is one half of that, seven and a half dollar loss. Net capital losses can be carried back for three years and forward indefinitely to be applied against other taxable capital gains. There is a restriction. So when you have a capital gain, half of it is taxable in Canada anytime you have it, unless you have net capital losses which you can utilize against those taxable capital gains. Now, I'm going to show you a complete example of how we calculate a capital gain here in Canada. Now, just bear with me here. This is my board where I've done an example. In this example, we have bought IBM stock. 100 shares at $185. $185 is pretty much the market value of an IBM share in November 2011. Now, when I made this transaction, I also incurred 1% of commission costs, which is $185. That makes my ACB in this example $18,685. Now say for this example I also sold the same shares in the same calendar year. I sold my 185 shares, my sorry, my 100 shares for $220 a share, which equals $22,000. I incurred 1% of commissions, which is 220, giving me net proceeds of disposition on this transaction of $21,780. Then I determine a capital gain, which is my $21,780 less my $18,685, giving me a capital gain of $3,095. Well, the taxable portion of this capital gain is only $1,547. Thus, if I didn't have any net capital losses carry forward to utilize against this amount, then I would be recording this amount on my line 127 of my T1 general income tax return. This is a fairly straightforward example of a capital gain here in Canada for 2011. That is pretty much it for my introduction to basic capital gains for income tax purposes here in Canada. 
there will be further videos expanding on capital gains. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below. You can send me an email at peter at supertax.ca. Thank you very much. Take care.